اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آور ٹو ڈے لیکچر از اباؤٹ کلیننگ اینڈ ڈس انفیکشن ان دس لیکچر وی ول ڈیفائن کلیننگ اینڈ ڈس انفیکشن وی ول ڈفرینشیٹ بٹوین ڈرائی اینڈ ویٹ کلیننگ وی ول گو تھرو دا اسٹیپس ٹو پریپیئر دی فارم فار دا نیکسٹ بلاک we will see important classes of disinfectants and their characteristics so first of all cleaning and disinfection in the literature are sometimes collectively known as decontamination providing newborn chicks with a healthy environment require proper cleaning and efficient disinfection cleaning and disinfection are key components of routine biosecurity and there is an important aspect of this topic that disinfection without cleaning is wastage of money and time for example if you use disinfectants on organic matter or in presence of organic matter then disinfectants will not work so first cleaning and then disinfection is a better strategy if we define the cleaning literally cleaning means the removal of dirt dust harmful residues fat or any other objectionable matter a good cleaning process will remove 80% of disease agents cleaning is performed in two steps dry cleaning and wet cleaning dry cleaning is like sweeping or wiping remove, removing of the uh, visible material and wet cleaning involve the use of water and the det- detergents to clean the surfaces so detergents are the chemical compounds having surfactant properties and the detergents help us to remove the dirt thoroughly so when we are going to perform the cleaning first we go for the dry cleaning and then we go for the wet cleaning now we will define what is a disinfectant please note that disinfectant can be a physical agent it can be a chemical agent most of the time these are the chemicals that we use for this in disinfection purpose the disinfectants they kill the uh, microorganisms or inactivate the micro- microorganisms and in poultry we have two types of disinfection program number one is the terminal disinfection program that is practiced when the flock ends we prepare the flock uh, our form for the uh, next flock and continuous disinfection uh, involves sanitation of the drinking water or continuous use of the disinfection procedures uh, for example procedures that are adopted during the here you can see the different steps to prepare the house or the for shed for the next batch uh, the at step 1 we remove the old litter then we go for the dry cleaning during the dry cleaning procedure um, all leftover bedding material or organic material it is scraped or brushed you remove the spider webs empty the uh, feeder or the feeding lines then it is followed by the wet cleaning and uh, there is a precaution that before the wet cleaning switch off the electric supply remove bulbs temperature humidity sensor cover the motors with the polythene bag and uh, wet cleaning is further a two stage process first we soak and then we wash soaking is done with the combination of uh, water and detergent or surf the soaking is done on the floor and for the equipment 
and the scrubbing is used to remove uh, uh, the organic material or dust. Soaking is followed by washing of all surfaces and equipment. Of course, it is done on the good form with the pressure washers. The while uh, washing, the attention should be paid to the corners, cracks, porous surfaces. Next comes the disinfection of the water lines. The water lines, they could have the biofilms, the colonies of the bacteria, which can be a threat. To disinfect the water lines, uh, different types of disinfectants, they are available in the market. We make the solution in the tank. We fill the water lines, let this disinfection containing water to retain or remain within the pipelines, maybe for 24 hours, depending upon the company instructions and then we flush it then comes necessary repairs on the form then white washing the white wash is used inside outside and uh, it includes the walls and the uh, ceiling for inside of the shed once the cleaning procedure is complete we can go for use of the disinfection commercially different sprays are available for disinfectant spray first you air tight the shed then go with the sprayer the sh after spray shed should remain closed for 24 hours during the spray use gloves and mask usually double disinfection is done at the time interval of 24 hours once the, this process is complete, we bring the new litter in Pakistani situation, a rice husk is used and for further safety, this uh, litter material is further spread. After this, we go for fumigation. Fumigation is from the vapors or the fumes. In fumigation, KMnO4 and formalin are used in a specific ratio that is 2 into 1 and uh, for fumigation the first step is to airtight the shed bring the temperature to almost uh, 70 degree Fahrenheit and now the fumigation um, uh, its intensity or uh, how good it is it will depend upon the how much formalin and KMnO4 is being used to give you an example if we mix 35 ml of the formalin with 17.5 gram of the KMnO4 then this fume will have 1x power if we increase it further we can bring it to 3x power also and this combination will produce the fumes that will give coverage to 100 cubic square feet of the area so uh, followed by the fumigation, we have to also look after and disinfect the surrounding area, usually 30 to 40 uh, feet around the shed. Once all these steps have been done, everything is clean, disinfected. The shed after the cleaning should remain closed for at least 10 to 15 days and this period is known as downtime. This time it uh, is enough to, for the disinfectants to work and uh, due to inside uh, dryness and with the time the pathogen load if it remains it becomes low and um, yes this is, this is the downtime. In this picture uh, to make your concept clear Further, uh, here a uh, soaking process is done. You can see that the workers, they are using uh, water with detergent and they are cleaning uh, the uh, floor. Following soaking, we go for washing. You can see here the water under pressure is being uh, used to wash every surface including the ceiling. 
in this picture uh, you can see how biofilms are formed first bacteria they stick to the inside or the lining of the surfaces like water line they grow up and make their colonies and then slowly with the drinking water these leak out and these biofilms they are not good so in the lower picture you can see the inside of the pipes and you can see here that the sticky materials are the biofilms and to remove that this we have already uh, discussed that uh, what can be done how to use the disinfectant and so on white wash is also done inside outside it's important step to prepare the form so here uh, and someone is going to use the uh, is going to spray the disinfectant here is the fresh litter uh, rice rice husk the rice husk is being sprayed with uh, disinfectant you can see the fumigation cleaning and disinfection of the surrounding area and here you can see a uh, uh, glimpse of the fumigation procedure the ratio between these two chemical is 1 to 2 temperature is 70 degree fahrenheit and uh, if we mix 35 cc formally with 17.5 gram of the potassium mercury permanganate then it is enough for 100 cubic feet of the room space and if we we are using uh, this much quantity of these chemicals the concentration of the power will be one but if we need more power uh, we will have to increase the concentration for example uh, when we mix 52.5 gram of KMnO4 with uh, 105 milliliter uh, of uh, formalin then the power of the fumes are their disinfection power it becomes three times and this is uh, uh, enough for uh, 100 cubic feet area choosing a disinfectant the activity of a disinfectant depends upon its chemical nature and of course the pathogen which is our target when choosing a disinfectant consider these factors number one comes the cost then its efficacy uh, its activity in presence of organic matter for example many organic ma uh, many uh, disinfectants they will, will not work if there is enough organic matter its toxicity to man and animal its residual activity its effect on fabrics and metal activity in presence of the detergent or soap its solubility contact time uh, disinfectants, different disinfectants, they take different uh, time. Some they act very rapidly, others they may take more time. And then comes the temperature. Next is the a table that shows uh, different disinfectants that are used in the poultry sector and their different characteristics. To explain this table, uh, we take the example of the phenol. For example, phenol, it has a um, uh, virocidal effect, bactericidal effect. It is active against the eggs and the larvae of the parasite. It is active in presence of organic matter. Uh, it is active with the detergents. It don't has a corrosive effect and it can be used for the foot bath. The there are different classes of uh, disinfectants based on their chemical composition. The most common in poultry sector are the phenols, hypochlorides, iodophores, quaternary ammonium compound, compounds, formaldehyde, oxidizing agents, and of course natural disinfectants. Because disinfectants, they can be dangerous for the worker. Therefore, the use of the glove and mask is recommended and the company's instruction should be followed for that. There is also a role of the water quality in the disinfection. Water quality should be good enough if the pH is not in the correct range, if there is organic matter, 
if uh, hardness is low then it compromises uh, or it if interferes with the activity of the disinfectant